Hello world, um, welcome to a quick walkthrough of how to create a website hosted on GitHub pages using Code Anywhere and GitHub. So I've done this uh, tutorial a couple times and as uh, Code Anywhere and GitHub continue to improve their services, uh, things change enough that I have to do a new one. Um, Code Anywhere just released their version six update and GitHub just revamped the repository homepage layout. Uh, both of these changes are really great changes and so I'm excited to show you um, what's going on. Uh, Code Anywhere's change is super significant. Um, they've even altered their pricing scheme. So at this point now, uh, the free account gets you access to a pretty unfettered online IDE. Um, the starter account adds in uh, collaboration and support. And then uh, the freelancer account gives you an always on container and uh, up to 50 ST FTP server connections. Um, that's Those are pretty decent uh, uh, plans. It's interesting that that's how they chose to change them. And I just wanted to put in a plug. I've um, Me and my students have worked with uh, uh, Code Anywhere for a year now. And their support has always been super great. So uh, upgrading to at least the starter version for the for the premium support and the collaboration seems like a pretty excellent deal. Um, what do you get when you when you use Code Anywhere? You get an online IDE. It's uh, the architecture um, of the system that you use in Code Anywhere is built around uh, projects. Projects each have containers. Containers contain different aspects of a website. It's a fairly uh, close mapping to what you might be doing if you're using something like Docker or Kubernetes or Mesos or any of those sorts of uh, uh, infrastructure management uh, technologies. Um, it's not presented in a very complex way, so Code Anywhere remains fairly accessible to people who are pretty new to the system. I do want to say for people who are using version 5 and who might have had uh, work in progress on version 5 or um, or other things about version 5 that they don't want to leave behind yet, um, there is a URL, uh, this codeanywhere.com slash editor slash v5, where uh, you can access everything that you had in version 5 and using the version 5 uh, interface. So if you want to go back to version 5, you can. But um, I, I strongly encourage you to move forward into uh, into the current version. Now, um, a lot has changed about setting up uh, Code Anywhere, and I'm assuming that you already have a GitHub account that you can log into, and that you also have a Code Anywhere account that you can log into. And once you log into your Code Anywhere account, you're going to find yourself presented with a blank workspace like um, like you see here, and you're going to have um, a default project uh, which is identified here. And uh, on your in your project, you're going to create new connections. And um, those connections are going to connect to different repositories that, that come together to make up your, your project. So uh, one thing that you'll want to do, instead of doing an SSH key exchange, you will actually uh, just want to go into your account dashboard and you will want to uh, go to your um, go to your account settings and you'll see your uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, Google Plus, Facebook, and DigitalOcean uh, account connections. Um, you're going to want to connect GitHub, which will just do the standard OAuth connection. So um, if I disconnect it and I hit connect again, I get the standard login. Um, since I'm already logged in over in this tab, it just bounces me right back. And uh, I've already authorized this app on GitHub, so it doesn't need any authorization. You, you will probably see a screen that says, this app is going to use these permissions. It's going to access your repositories. Um, and uh, you know, do you want to allow that? And you'll say yes, right? Um, once you get back into, once you do that, now you can uh, configure a connection using any of your GitHub repositories. So let's go back over to GitHub and create a new repository. We're going to uh, go to our, our profile page or really anywhere. You click the plus button and hit new repository. For um, this looks like a great repository name, Literate Octo Winner. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to put in here code anywhere and GH pages demo. And that's the description for this repository. I'm going to keep it public. I always initialize with README, and I always um, add a license. Uh, let's go GPLv2. <laughs> and, um, and we will uh, create our repository. Now, this is the new uh, GitHub repository homepage layout. 
it basically puts all the stuff that used to be along the right sidebar across the top, which is uh, actually super handy. So I think this is very easy to accommodate. You have your issues and pull requests and wiki all across the top. And then um, to find your clone URL, you know, you would normally copy here. But now that we have ourselves connected to GitHub, uh, Code Anywhere can actually pull in a list of our uh, of our repo. So now that we've created that repo on GitHub, we can go to Code Anywhere and say new connection. We can connect to a GitHub repo and I will put in literate and it easily pulls up for me literate octo winner. Um, notice that the auto detect stack is checked so it will try to figure out what technology I need to run that. Um, repository, since the repository is empty, it will probably not be able to determine that so I'll have to uh, have to check that out um, and like you see here it says I don't know what stack to put you on because there's nothing in this repository yet so we're just going to scroll down to HTML5 and I'm going to pick HTML5 on Ubuntu you could pick CentOS if you want no, no real impact on this demonstration and then uh, the container is going to clone So it did pop up um, an error, and I'm not exactly sure why that happened. I'll have to uh, look into that. But um, it cloned the Literate Octo winner uh, URL into, um, or, or repository, excuse me, into my container here in uh, Code Anywhere. I have an SSH connection attached to my Code Anywhere development box, which, um, which is... Uh, right here and I can use this I can do standard commands like list and I can see the license and the readme file that are part of my um, my repository I also see those over here on the left side I have a summary of the configuration of this container which I can see is an HTML5 development stack running Apache with uh, NPM that's node package manager Yeoman, Bauer and Grunt I can see that I have five gig of disk space, half a gig of RAM, there is pseudo access, the SSH terminal is listening on the port, and I have access to all HTTP and WebSocket ports. The container is running Ubuntu 14.04. So um, this is uh, uh, very similar to the information that you would see before, and uh, you know it's good to know, but um, you don't really need to think too much about it to do a simple uh, simple web page. Um, you can start creating HTML pages at this point and uh, working with them. So if I right click, uh, actually not right click, but if I um, just hit the plus file to create a new file, I can create a new file here. And um, I will just make a quick HTML file. So what I did there is just created a simple HTML file and I um, saved it as index.html. A lot of people uh, that I work with have a hard time with the views here. Um, this was a very short file so I could type it within that space. But if you want to, it's, it's important to remember that you can always switch to single column layout, which I actually find a lot easier to use when I, uh, in general when I'm developing. Um, now I can... Uh, you know, run this project the same way that I used to run my projects in Code Anywhere before. So I can run it, preview it, and see Hello World. Now when you run it, it opens it up in its own tab, which is very handy because then you can inspect and use uh, dev tools uh, in a more convenient way. So that's quite handy. Um, and now that I've got this uh, page built, I can uh, commit this and I can deploy it to GitHub Pages all from right here on the code anywhere server um, but what I have to remember 
is that I, um, I, I have to type the git commands into the SSH terminal now with the new update. Um, previously, there was a right-click menu for git commands, and those were always a little bit problematic, but for a lot of beginners, that was super helpful. Um, now you have to do it on the command line. And uh, I'm just going to step through it because it's really just a few commands, and you can run basically the same commands all the time and go through the same process every single time you want to um, push work. So the, um, you know, that's, that's basically... Uh, uh, the only way to work with it at this point in time is to use the command line git interface. Um, most people who do use git on a daily basis end up preferring the command line git interface. So uh, this is, should not be seen as a hardship, although it's, it's a little bit extra to learn right away, um, which, which can be a problem. So, um, so here on the command line, you're going to want to remember a couple of commands. The first one is your ls command. And that's going to list all of the files in your directory. Um, we can see that index.html shows up there. We also see it on the left side in the directory. Um, there's the git command. And if you just type git, you'll get information about how to use git. Um, but this information isn't super helpful. It's probably more useful for you to be aware of things like this, which is um, a, a git cheat sheet. So if you print this out and keep it on your desk or keep it uh, in your backpack, you'll be able to um, refer to this to remind yourself of what all of these little git commands are. Um, the commands themselves are not actually that complex most of the time that you're using them, but there are a lot of them to remember, so it'll take a while to sink in. You're going to use them over and over again, so the most common things you do are going to become uh, pretty easy for you to remember uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so you know, you'll, don't, don't fear that you have to memorize every single one of these commands right now. Uh, rather focus on just the few commands that you use on a regular basis. So here now that we have file changes, we're going to say um, git status, and that's going to tell us what's changed in our repository. And the only thing that's changed is that we have index.html, and we can see here that it is an untracked file, and we see this message use git add file name, to include it in what will be committed. Um, as you've probably already read, Git operates on a notion of the, the work environment, which is where you're actively changing files, the staging area, which is where you've got files um, that you're uh, telling Git that you want to include in the next commit, and then the commit. And once you make the commit, the commit is sort of um, set in the history of the project and you can push that commit anywhere, you can pull that commit to anywhere, um, and you can work with it. It's, it's basically a big milestone in your project, you know, and you can always get back to that milestone. Um, but until it's committed, uh, things can be modified quite a lot and changed, and they, they shouldn't be considered like totally safe. So um, we need to add this file to our project as a tracked file. So we're going to use this command that they tell us to use there, git add, and we're just going to type index.html. And now if we run git status, we'll see that we now have changes to be committed. And that means that these changes are staged to be committed. So they are in the staging area right now. So that is a new file, index.html. And we want that file to be committed. So the first thing we're going to do is say git commit. And then we're going to use the dash m flag so that we can send a message. Because git always needs a commit message. And it's easier to supply it this way when you're doing kind of low level individual work like this. So git commit dash m uh, created hello world. So now if we run git status again, it will tell us that we have nothing to commit, but our branch is ahead of origin slash master by one commit. That means that we have work on this computer that is one chain set ahead of GitHub. So I'm going to um, push this to GitHub using git push origin. And it gives me some uh, messaging that says I could I should be setting the push default configuration on this box, which is part of the GitHub global user configuration. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for now, but it still uh, sent 
all of the objects and it uh, tells me that it stored a host key for the GitHub server. So that's all, um, that's all fine and I expect that. The next thing that I want to do is create a GH pages branch so that GitHub pages will publish this. Now to do that I need to create a branch then I need to uh, push that branch to GitHub as a new what we'll call a remote branch and that's a term that is used in Git so um, so we're going to create a new remote branch that matches our new local branch. The local branch is being cr created right here on Code Anywhere. So to do that, we do um, we use Git, and we're going to check out this branch because we want to switch ourselves into this branch. Dash B tells Git to create a new branch, and then we're going to call this GH Dash Pages. GH Dash Pages is a special name that GitHub specifies that is required so that GitHub can identify a branch that you want it to publish to the GitHub Pages server. As you can see now, it says that I've switched to a new branch, GH Pages. If I do a git status again, it will show me I'm on branch GH Pages. So, now I'm going to uh, push this branch to the remote server. So I'm going to say git push, which is the same command that I used before, right? And I'm going to say origin gh dash pages colon gh dash pages. And I forgot one thing that I always forget, and that's a dash u. So it should be git push dash u origin gh pages colon gh pages. Now what this says is it says git push this change the, this branch to the origin server and the dash u says update it so that this branch knows that it's connected to that remote server. So that's so that in the future we can just say git push origin and this branch will go up to origin properly. Then um, we say we want you to push this local GH pages branch to the origin server and we want it to be called GH pages on the on the origin server. So that's what GH pages colon GH pages tells it that we want it to be called GH pages on the origin server. So when we do that, it now pushed it and we can very clearly see that it has set up a new branch on the origin server on github.com is set up a new branch that is called GH pages and that the branch GH pages was set up to track the remote branch GH pages from origin. So we get a very clear success message here. So now what we expect to see if we click back over to GitHub, if we refresh here in the master branch we see our index.html and that looks proper and if we pull down we see that we also have a branch called GH pages if we click on that, that also looks proper. The index.html file contains the code that we want it to contain. And now, if we go to um, our settings, we can see that GitHub Pages has successfully published this site at this URL. If we click this URL, we now get redirected. And mine uses a domain name because I have a domain name pointed to my uh, GitHub profile. So that's that's other stuff that you can learn about and, and work on with your uh, GitHub profiling and services that GH Pages provides for you. So this is a really um, great combination of tools. You can basically create easy uh, development environments in your web browser using any modern web browser and build pages uh, using pretty robust tools um, on Code Anywhere. And then you can very easily use your git commands to push uh, files to your GH Pages branch and publish them so that everybody on the internet can see those files. And then of course you have the side effect that you are building a, repo uh, a profile with a bunch of repositories on GitHub so that people can see all the different work that you're doing. So it's, it's a great uh, setup and it's really easy to work with and the changes on both sides from both Code Anywhere and GitHub are actually super powerful and really helpful. And um, 
you know, the downside is just that you have to get a little bit closer to get a little bit earlier in your uh, experimentation. That's not so bad. So uh, take care. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I, I hope this is helpful. Good luck with your code and your projects. Bye-bye.